Now back in video number 50, entitled, How Do You Know God Is Real? We talked about one of the ways that I know God is real. In that video, we mentioned that we were not looking for physical or scientific evidences. Rather, we were looking for relational proofs, since God is a relational God. Would you now be interested in knowing that there is a yet a second proof that I have found? One that Jesus himself reveals in the Bible. That is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not shallow. For we do not want a faith that runs aground when the storms of life hit. Indeed, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee, really. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Hmm. Richly satisfying. So here we go. Now, you may be asking, so Charles, are you now going to share all those passages which talk about the wonders of the universe that scream out God's glory, or those that talk about us being fearfully and wonderfully made, all as proof of God's existence? No, not so much. For while both nature and the complexity that is found in the human cell do attest to an intelligence that set everything in motion, they do not prove who or what that intelligence might be. Now, how can I say things like that? That things like the fine-tuning of the universe for life or the organized machinery that is inside the human cell does not prove who God is? Well, primarily speaking, because it doesn't. Nor does the Bible ever offer them as proofs for God's existence. Now, the Bible does talk about them to indicate his splendor, to tell of his power, to describe his knowledge, and proclaim his superiority to all those created gods by mankind. But they are never, ever offered as proof for God's existence. That is always assumed. That is always a given. Now see, if you watched uh, video 50, then you heard me talk all about that one proof that I have found, the proof that God is real and is who he claims to be. And that is my love and compassion continue to grow for those who are unlovable to me, those who are unlovable from my human perspective. Okay, so now it is time for the second proof that I have found for God's existence. And by the way, this one also does involve love. I know, go figure, that this proof would also involve loving others. Yeah. Now, this love, however, has nothing to do with me. This love is the love that other Christians have for other people, both fellow Christians and non-Christians alike. See, it would be one thing if my growing compassion were nothing more than mere sentiment getting the better of me. Yet, it is quite another thing when the larger body of Christ also exhibits this love to others. But Jesus himself said, it was by this that everyone will know, if you have love one for another. And then in John 17, Jesus asks the Father that we may all be one, just as he and the Father are one, in order that the world will know that you sent me, and that you loved them even as you loved me, and that the love with which you loved me might be in them and I in them. See, love is of vital importance. It is, as we love each other, that the world will come to know God. That is, they will believe God to exist and to be who he reveals himself to be in the Bible as a direct result of seeing his love demonstrated in and by and through Christians. Now, yes, unfortunately, there are many, 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 many examples of a severe lack of this love by Christians. That is just simply a sad fact. And because of that, it is no wonder that many people reject Christ, since they cannot believe what they do not see demonstrated. As the Bible says, 
How will they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? Now yet, and yet, there are many, many, many examples of this love being shown. Now one of the great examples that I can think of is the Salvation Army. See, these folks, they arrive at devastated areas well before the Red Cross shows up. They offer unsolicited aid and they ask nothing in return. It's simply what they do. Their love for God compels them to help fellow human beings in need. Now another fine example is when Christians volunteer their time, money, and effort to help those who are now in devastated areas, you know, such as when a natural disaster strikes. Well, such as when Hurricane Katrina came through back in 2005, leaving many people homeless. During this time, many Christians from around the country came together to help those who had lost everything. They took time off of work, they paid for their own travel, their own supplies. I mean, they brought food and water to these folks. They brought all the materials needed to rebuild the houses that these folks had lost. And they asked nothing in return. It was their love for God that compelled them to help their fellow human beings in pain. Yet, as wonderful as these greater displays of compassion are, it is the simple everyday acts of kindness, the small acts of compassion, and the rendering of dignity to others that best offer proof for a relational God. See, Scripture gives us a good idea of what this looks like. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Well, I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, but you came to me. And inasmuch as you have done this to one of the least of these, my brothers, you have done it unto me. Or, as James puts it, pure religion, undefiled religion before our God and Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. Now Peter says it just a little different. He says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellence of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And John says it this way, he has made us to be a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. So how will others know? They must be told. And how will they be told? Well, somebody's got to tell them. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I can hear the objections already. Man, you know, the preacher's got to be sent, they says, but I'm not a preacher. I can't be doing this. <laughs> I'm not a preacher either. That's not my lane, and I'm happy to stay out of it. But consider this. There may be more than one way to tell others, that is, to proclaim His excellence. How might that be? Does the phrase, by this, all men will know, sound familiar? If we love one another. See, a smile when heated words are expected, a return of too much change when it is mistakenly given to you, a good tip for good service, a warm greeting instead of a chilly silence, the choice to not react when that idiot cuts you off on the highway, or even, or even to simply refrain from all forms of gossip. These are all great, great places to start. See, respect given speaks volumes to the one it is given to. And according to Jesus, it is the best way to allow him to say, hello, my name's Jesus. It's the best way for people to know he is real. So go on. I dare you, show God to the world. Love simply, love wisely, and love well. Well, what do you think? Please tell me in the comments section below. Also, in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them. That way you can check me out, make sure I'm not making any of this up or that I'm too far way out in left field. 
Also, if you like this video, please click the like and the subscribe button and then click that gray notification bell that pops up and tell YouTube you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, if you'd like the podcast version of this video, you can simply go to simplenotshallow.com and download it there or go to your favorite podcast service, you know, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, whichever one you like, and subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. That way, you can listen anytime, anywhere, any way you'd like. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll catch you next time.